Dear God, please save us from the progression of technology. I already have video of Julio Jones in a Titans uniform. Now, don't worry, this is just merely a deep fake of Julio Jones. And uh, no reason to be creeped out, since this technology just has the potential to upend society as we know it. Someone could be deep faked doing anything these days. Except maybe Aaron Rodgers in a Packers jersey in 2021. That will never happen again. Welcome to That Good Sports. I'm Brandon. One trade down, one to go, Perna. The Tennessee Titans are getting a Julio Jones. And of course, this trade happens just a couple days after I predicted the Colts to win the AFC South in last week's episode. Now, I think Julio may put the Titans back in the driver's seat. Today, I want to crown a winner of this trade. Which I know is stupid, because most times, trades really benefit both sides. Uh, the clear losers are the Packers, who have no money and therefore couldn't gift Julio to Aaron Rodgers. Even though he probably would have just sent him back anyway. Plus, we will discuss why people are calling Tom Brady a predator this weekend, a key Aaron Rodgers date, and why I will always love Dan Campbell. Whew, that's good sports! Please do not subscribe to this YouTube channel. Uh, smoking and that's good sports. Two things horrible for you. Today's episode is sponsored by manscaped.com slash good sports. And I think Manscaped needs to reclassify itself as an all natural male enhancement product because with its plethora of tools, nothing is enhancing your groin like Manscaped, especially with the new lawnmower 4.0. Yes, the skin safe technology is more techy, more safey, and honestly, this tool is a work of art. Like my body after Manscaped came into my life. It's got a two-tone black finish that you can now charge wirelessly. Manscaped also added a travel lock feature so your shaver doesn't start buzzing in your bag at the airport. The Lawnmower 4.0 comes with four trimmer guard options for varying hair length. I go short in the summer and a tight shag in the winter to stay warm, baby. Each time Manscaped upgrades a product, it's to increase functionality and make for a better grooming experience. So make sure you have the right tools for your family jewels by ordering at manscaped.com slash good sports. Link in the description. It'll save you 20% off plus free international shipping. It's a whole new balls game. All right, one Tom Brady was spotted in a TikTok video this weekend. Can you spot him? Really in. Word. Apparently that was on Noah Beck's TikTok featuring Charlie D'Amelio, who have 27.4 and 117 million followers. Both far more popular than Tom Brady in this world of social media, which is fucking bizarre to me. I think I'm getting old because I don't even have the heart to try and make an inappropriate joke about Brady hanging out with a bunch of teens like everyone in the comments was doing. Instead, I want to defend him. This dude won seven Super Bowls, yet the internet is like, let's follow this dude Noah at three times the rate for videos like this. I am so fucking jealous of these kids getting to make money doing nothing other than hanging with their friends and doing dumb dances. It is the American dream built by China. <laughs> it looks like Tom is friends with one of these kids' dads, but if I know Tom's strategy here, after he gets an eighth Super Bowl, his goal is to shift to becoming the most popular influencer on the planet, which I will not defend. Speaking of people, uh, Floyd Mayweather and Logan Paul boxed this weekend. I don't know what happened and I don't care. All I wanted to share was this amazing Floyd Mayweather soundbite. Legalized bank robbing, I'm the best. I honestly think TikTokers are also great legalized bank robbers. All right, Julio Jones. Julio Jones plane touched down in Tennessee today. The Tennessee airport is the only place it will be easy for Julio to touch down. 
I'm sorry, I just remember 2019 when Julio only scored a touchdown in one of the final 12 weeks of the season. Also in 2018 when he didn't score his first TD until week 8 despite having 400 plus yard games, two of which he went for 169 yards and 173 yards. Now nobody is more excited about the trade than Titans receiver AJ Brown who said, Y'all done fucked up. He did excuse his language first, which makes saying fuck totally okay. <laughs> Brown knows Julio will draw the attention of top corners, but more importantly, Julio will never take away any of AJ's targets in the red zone. <laughs> okay, I, I will stop about the anomaly and the lack of Julio touchdowns for those two seasons. I love Julio Jones, and I think this is a good move for the Titans. So the Falcons send the 10-year vet to Tennessee and a sixth round pick in exchange for a 2022 second round pick and a 2023 fourth round pick, ending the speculation that Julio would end up on the Seahawks, the Packers, the Chargers, the Broncos, the Cowboys, the everyone else that apparently couldn't spare a day two and day three pick in exchange for one of the greatest freak athletically, physically dominant wide receivers anyone has ever seen. The Titans had the balls and maybe the inside man to get the deal done. So if you need a refresher, Tennessee's former offensive coordinator, Arthur Smith became Atlanta's head coach this past off season. My question, is he departed Matt Damon for the Titans or did he fleece his former team? Either way, he fleeced us all out of witnessing an offense with Julio Jones, Kyle Pitts and Calvin Ridley. That's a team that could have broken the scoring record and gone seven and 10. <laughs> Imagine if Josh McDaniels actually took that job with the Colts and then sent T.Y. Hilton over to the Patriots. Imagine the uproar. This is basically the same thing. I'd say watch out for Arthur Smith to send Tennessee one of their great defenders from Atlanta, but they don't have any. No, not to rain on the Titans parade, but Parades are fucking lame and a completely outdated form of entertainment in public gatherings. So here's where I rain on that a bit. I'm not sure how much better Julio Jones makes the Titans offense than it already was, as he's essentially coming in to replace Corey Davis and Johnu Smith's production from last year, which was pretty good for Davis, 65 receptions and 984 four yards and five touchdowns. Obviously, Johnny Smith added a bunch of touchdowns to the equation and the Titans did not upgrade the tight end position, but I think Julio, if healthy, can replace both and certainly will outperform Davis's production if he stays healthy. Jones was on pace for nearly 1400 yards last year before getting hurt. He missed like seven games and wasn't that far behind Davis's totals. Uh, he was also the number one target on a bad team that always trailed and couldn't run the ball. So age plus injury plus the wide receiver position always makes me a little bit nervous, but I believe in Julio. And worst case scenario is he puts up the same numbers as Davis while only playing half the season. I just curb your expectations a little bit, Titans fans, because you lost two key offensive pieces and replaced it with one. Now the upside for Jones is he's never played in an offense that had the threat that Derrick Henry poses coming out of the backfield. Julio has always been the biggest danger to an opposing defense. He now might be the third because that's how good I think AJ Brown is entering year three. Julio will also cost less to the Titans than it would have uh, to pick up Corey Davis's fifth year option. Here's the real difference. Davis may have been a product of the scheme and being on the other side of A.J. Brown. Julio Jones, well, he's the product of God getting drunk and turning all the sliders up on a human being. I imagine God likes to drink. And what does God like to drink? Bench warmer brew with a shot of Jameson. Or is it a shot of bench warmer brew with a bottle of Jameson? Benchwarmerbrew.com. We are coffee. So Julio goes from Matt Ryan to Ryan Tannehill. It's the evolution of Ryan. Something Rex and Rob refuse to do. Now Tannehill is 
Probably the better deep ball passer right now. Per PFF, he's accurate on 49% of his deep balls, while Matt Ryan was only accurate on 39%. That could have something to do with teams stacking the box to stop Derrick Henry. And I don't know if Todd Gurley had that same effect last year, but Tannehill does exactly what this offense needs. He's a good player who gives the ball to great players. And unlike Matty Ice, does have the athleticism to extend the play when needed. My final question is, what should Shannon Sharp have to give the Falcons in terms of compensation since he killed their leverage by the live Julio Jones phone call on his show? You want to go to the Cowboys, Julio? Or you want to stay in Atlanta? Oh, man, no, I'm out of there, man. You He's out. out. He's out of there. Well, I think Shannon should have to come back for a season to be in two tight end sets with Kyle Pitts. Uh, looking at his body right now, though, uh, Shannon Sharp could probably put up 600 yards and six touchdowns. Basically, Tim Tebow numbers. And that's why I think the Titans won this trade. The Falcons are half in on a rebuild right now, and the Titans, they are in a tightening Super Bowl window. Julio helps their odds if their defense plays better, and if their offense runs the same without Arthur Smith. That's the big question. Now, if this doesn't burst the crypto bubble, I don't know what will. Antonio Brown has officially lent his endorsement to D's Nuts Coin. I can't imagine a more appropriate sponsor for a guy who just settled a sexual assault case. D's Nuts Coin. Personally, I don't know if Antonio Brown has the funds to be making any type of reckless investments. When you add up legal fees, child support, mustache dye, and fines for calling team employees bitch-ass crackers, it doesn't leave you with a ton of disposable income. Honestly, I think he can make more money selling his own bitch-ass crackers. Now keep an eye on Packers' mandatory minicamp tomorrow, Tuesday, June 8th. If Aaron Rodgers does not show up, he could be fined $93,000. The Packers could also do him a solid and give him an excused absence. Between his parents and now the Packers, Rodgers is running out of people to give him an excused absence. Doing just that, though, would be a smart move by the team in terms of showing they still love him and they'll, they'll, they'll work with him. I think a fine by the team is an act of aggression and won't help them in convincing Rodgers to return. If Rodgers does not show up, it's another small gesture uh, indicating he will never show up for another Packers practice again. If he does show up, then fuck. My dreams will die in real time tomorrow, Tuesday, June 8th, 2021. And finally, Lions head coach Dan Campbell is going to get a lot of love from me until he is fired or eaten by a lion. I think the chances of one or the other occurring is about 50-50. Last week, Dan Campbell showed up to his press conference wearing a racing helmet. Hello, I know I'm a little muffled. I want to thank uh, the Detroit Grand Prix for allowing me to be Grand Marshal on uh, June 12th at Belle Isle. So, as you can see, I'm pretty excited about that. Now I'll open it to questions. If you want any evidence on how much his players love him, just look at this side-by-side -side with tight end TJ Hawkinson and Dan Campbell. Men want to be him. Women want to be with him. He is a man's man. Dan Campbell. Thanks for watching. That's Good Sports Julio Jones Trade Edition. Please, if you want to watch another video, click what you see on the screen here. There's links in the description for my coffee, links to other videos, links for anything you want to buy, except for health insurance. Don't sell that. Not until I get fired from this job.